Stage five beginning. Wizaps into power borrowed from Dusk's to seal G inside a painting scroll, hoping to force the main suspect to submit. At the same time, the contamination within Da Huan has reached a tipping point, threatening to spiral out of control. You're leaving again? You're not going to try to talk me out of it this time. When have you ever listened? I'll feel empty inside if you don't at least nag a little bit. I can still walk, and my limbs remain sturdy. The spring wind is still chilly, so it's not like I can sunbathe in my chair. You know how dangerous it is up north. But, shoes as as as. You also know we have no choice there. It took us decades just to carve out this little plot of land. But, it's still not enough. We're always short on food and land. If we go a bit further north, we might just find some special crops that can grow in origin are you untainted soil. But, we'd be able to cultivate the entire continent, and nobody would go hungry ever again. Even more reason for you to stay. If we can't find a crop like that, We'll just cultivate slowly. It might take ten generations, or a hundred. But eventually... Does it look like I can wait that long? Besides, if the others heard things like crops that can be grown in origin IUM tainted soil, or cultivating the entire continent, they'd think I lost my mind. There's no arguing with you. Wisdom is one of the perks that comes with age. A woman extends her hand, her fingers tightly clenched. Ah, she was as is. Would you mind reading my palm again? See if this old lady still has the luck to realize her dreams this late in life? I already told you. I'm not doing that anymore. The woman smiles and Dunn clasps her hand, revealing a small white flower in the middle of her palm. She pins the flower to the hair bun of the girl in front of her. I found this in the fields today. I do believe it's the first flower to bloom this year. And that's surely a good omen. Maybe I'll make it back in time for this year's harvest. You just keep track of the days, and have some short trip soup ready for me. Oh, shoes is this. You've always been able to see that future, haven't you? In the end. No, don't tell me. I don't want to know when I'll die. I just want to ask, will our dream of the 10,000 King of Fertile Fields come true? Tian Shi. Jesus is this? What? You've been muttering around here all morning. You don't want to give up on this piece of land, and you? Right, sir. The mountains are lush. The water is clear, and the food's good too. I like it here a lot. Yeah, and she chooses as is. You were transferred to Da Huang not too long ago, right? You look very young. I've been here since I was born. 67 now. In all my years. I never thought I'd see the day when I had to leave. It's said that more than a thousand years have passed since Shen Nong reclaimed this land. How could we just... Just as crops are planted in spring and harvested in autumn. One cannot hope to evade the elements forever. It is the way of the world for things to go wrong. And we can only let nature run its course when you move to a nomadic city. Everyone will have something to do. Trust that the proper arrangements have been made. We just don't understand. We thought our harvest has been weak the past two years because of the weather. It's nothing we can't overcome with a bit of hard work. But no, you're telling us there's something wrong with the land itself. Cheers as it is. You Tianzis are wiser than us. Can't you please think of a way to save this land? Just tell us what we have to do. It doesn't matter how hard we have to work. Even if it means tilling every last clump of soil. It rained just two days ago. So how come this land is? A farmer standing at the edge of the field suddenly goes wide-eyed. All the water stored in the fields drains away at a speed discernible to the naked eye. As if there is a bottomless abyss hidden beneath the land. In a flash, all the water is gone. And along with it, the life of the land. The moist parry fields turn to hard and salt flats in an instant. Outless parched fissures, stretching outward. Stop right there. Where do you think you're going? I've delivered what I needed to deliver. I've seen the people I needed to see. And so... It's time for me to leave Why Have you come to see me off? You can't leave here. Not until you've given me an explanation. First... The Sui Regulator tells me to go. <sighs> then it tells me that I have to stay. You'll have to forgive me for not being able to keep my orders straight. What's your involvement with the demonic taint that's appeared in the middle of Da Huang? And what plans do you have for the devices in the court city? What's more, a hundred years ago, a particular convict escaped from the capital. And in just a few months, his pawns were all across Great Yans. What have you been doing in that time? I can't fathom what you're trying to say. Then, 
I'll simply have to escort you to a place where I can make things clear to you. The fact that you came here alone shows great bravery. Lord Zhao, if not for the fact that I'm short on time, I'd be more than glad to stay and chat with such a promising young man. But, what if I choose not to play along? The man takes out a Jade Weaver shuttle. Aside from its extra delicate appearance, nothing about it seems out of the ordinary. Suella takes notice of the gossamer threads wrapped faintly around it. Stop right there. Huh? A shock is only momentary. Before the man can lift the shuttle in his hand, the candle holder's blade is already at his neck. I'm just an ordinary man. I don't have the power to fight against your proxies. But within this scroll, there is no difference between the two of us. He's one of my sisters. How could a mortal dare to harness this power? Perhaps you underestimated the extent to which the fair NMU2 law gists have researched you. The Sui Regulator is fully aware of each and every one of your abilities. I never expected Dusks to have such a low opinion of me. That she'd rather team up with a candle holder to make my life difficult. Is it not a crime for a candle holder to come into private contact with a proxy? As guilty as you already are. Have you not considered the consequences of such an outrageous act? The most important thing is for me to stop you right here and bring you into custody. You drew the demonic taint into the Huang in order to destroy the Twelve Pagodas in Five Cities. Was this entire incident orchestrated by that particular convict? And if I were to say yes, what then? What are you going to do about it? Lord Zua, kill me right here and now. Granting the Sui beneath the capital city even greater consciousness? Is Yan's really prepared to march to war? If that's what it takes to stop you, then so be it. Even now, the Bastial Sui may not stand as a shield for the misdeeds of your kind. <sighs> Nevertheless, it is still a traitor whose value must be weighed. The man smiles, ignoring the long blade pointed at his neck. A dust, soft his robe and finds a stone step to sit on. I'm serious. Why so jittery? Now that I've been sealed within this painting, I am a simple tailor without the ability to so much as capture a foul beast. What? Are you worried I'll fly away? We rarely get such opportunities. So let's chat. The only thing you'll be doing is answering my questions. Are you not at all curious about the files in the library that you don't have the authorization to access? Such a great opportunity is sitting right here. Surely, those questions are of much more interest to you. Don't try to talk your way out of this. Then, let's settle the account. Between great yawns. Oh, and the fur and mutt. The trail's gone cold. If these demon-tainted seas floated over from that river, and why do the traces of contamination get fainter the closer we go to the edge of the city? Could it be... She scoops up a handful of sand and twirls it carefully within her palm, her brow knitting together. A newly built nomadic city in the distance undulates as its ends faint vibrations through the earth, like a continuous mountain range of the bulging back of a gargantuan beast. Steel and concrete prop up soil that is thousands of years old, a massive structure seemingly erecting a bridge that spans the ages. But who knows of the vestiges left upon this land across its myriad epochs? Was this your doing? All these years, we've been silently suppressing this demonic presence. What are you asked her? Lord Zou, have you ever seen a Sokor? Or perhaps, heard the idiom? To wrap yourself in your own cocoon. What are you getting at? I'm quite familiar with these things. For these creatures to grow, they must endure a calamity. Those that survive will break out of their cocoons. Those that do not will have their lives quietly snuffed out in the darkness. Who are you implying is the Sokorm here? You and I, and all things in existence. Say what you will, but we have no interest in comparing ourselves to insects. You people are so proud of the civilization you've built. What are there no records of the very beginning in the Sui Regulator's files? Of how the True Lung was able to end the Hundred Clam Rebellion? Of course we're aware. We understand full well that it was nothing more than about a folly brought about by the bestial Sui's arrogance. Not a gift of any sort. Well, are you that keen for Yans to sing the praises of your kind? Besides, uh, you no longer have that kind of power. 
No living being can escape the cycle of destruction and rebirth. Some are insects sing, not of sleet or ice. Everything we see, here, and think is enclosed in a silken cocoon. And we must never forget our humility. What are you getting at? Since the end of that great battle and the appearance of our kind, the Suez Regulator has also accumulated a thousand years of history. Have you ever considered why Yans never moved to banish the Suez? Until now? A hundred years ago, the convict incited great chaos, resulting in the death of a proxy. Now that the awakening of the Bashal Suez is an inevitability, banishment has become a clear imperative. The Bashal Suez is awakening. Which Farah N and Mutalag Ayesti came up with that conclusion? Who stands to benefit when Yans goes to war? In whose interest would it be to banish the Suez? Did you fail to consider these questions? Lord Zul, or are you simply pretending that they don't exist? Why should I take anything you say at face value? Naturally. You don't have to believe me. Let us settle another account, setting aside the fact that I'm a lowly peddler. My brothers and sisters have for centuries kept a great many dangers from great Yans, even when it comes to my unemployed little sister. Yans cannot even fathom the amount of effort it would have taken to build its nomadic cities without her. There's also the sister who has been standing guard here all this time. When it comes to the symbiotic history of the fur, and Mats and Yans, from beginning to end, my brothers and sisters have done nothing to harm you. All they've wanted is to live like ordinary people. But now, they are about to lose their lives over some undeserved disaster. Lord Zibo, how are we to settle this account? Indeed, a number of you have made invaluable contributions to Yen's, which the nation has never forgotten. Yet now, there are some of you who choose to stand against great Yen's, threatening the lives of countless people. Why not take a look at the ground beneath your own feet? Didn't we already dispose of the contaminated crops? No, this is the grain that was harvested normally before. How did it become like this? The granary is filled with the rice that was harvested only a few days ago. What should have been a golden mound of grain has now turned into a red and black mass. Ma Stage 5N. Demonic fragments accidentally sewn into the ground a thousand years ago have now become the nexus of a threat looming over all Da Huang. In the midst of mass despair, Xu Zizis steps into the fields. It was just like a dream. He traversed a great, long journey, crossing mountains and ridges in the ice and snow, reaching an endless field of rice at the end of the road. The rich stalks glimmered like gold. She did not know who had planted them here, why they grew so prosperously. How wonderful. Then, stay here. To he use a voice calling out to her. No, no. He remembers her unfinished business, and the place she must return to. She picks up a stalk of rice. A vague figure waves a hoe around. Burying seeds in a plot. Who bad? Thank goodness. Everyone was waiting for you. You were gone so long. Did the trip go smoothly? Did you find the crops you were searching for? Oh, hi. Are you alright? I look a bit. Oh, wait, wait, what is this? Help. Someone. Xiao Xi, you're still here. I found a Tedosa. A contamination. It didn't come with a flat. The source must be underground. If we gather the Tianxi bureaus, it might not be too late to start researching now. There's no need to bother with that. We've already decided to abandon these lands. It won't take that much time. Give me maybe two or three days. And I should be able to pinpoint the source of the contamination. There must be a solution. Every bit of land here in Da Hard One. We haven't put in anywhere near that much effort yet. So how could we just give up? It's not just a few plots of land. It's the entire city. What? Everyone is to move into the core city and follow it east. Leaving behind all the other fields here by tomorrow. The other Tianzas are getting everyone together to prepare for the move. This is what matters most right now. You should go help them. Whose idea was this? Who else could order the entire city relocated? What? All these experimental fields. On these newly planted crops. This has already been a famine year. If we give up on these crops, how many more people are going crazy? It'll be just like it used to be used to be. We've tried our best. Evacuate the people as soon as possible. Establish post-disaster countermeasures in advance. You are a Tianxi. So have your priorities straight at a time like this. Is the legend true? 
What nonsense are you spouting now? What's hidden in the permafrets on the north bank of the river? It's those things that contaminated our land, isn't it? Just treat it like any other catastrophe. There have been so many things we couldn't protect over the years. The people aren't just going to leave. This is our land. Nobody's going till we figure out exactly what's going on. If Shen Nam could keep these enemies from our homes, then so can we. Is it an illusion? Vast fields in front of him instantly turn empty and barren. No, it's not that the fields have turned barren. Rather, heaven and earth are being invaded by a foreign space. It works beyond the recognition of any soul. What's going on over there? It's too late to... Trimzu says this. What incarnation was that? Oh, sorry. Is she sick? How did she become like this? Give her a proper burial. A thin, initiated body falls to the cold. Our ground. A small pack of seeds tucked in the pocket of her flimsy shirt. Are these the seeds she brought back? That she managed to find the legendary seeds. Our harvests have been terrible the last couple of years. Maybe with this packet of seeds. There's some hope after all. Let's take it back. How'd the demonic contamination end up underground? Isn't the Chamber of Heaven's design standing guard outside? How did the contaminants get past the old one and make their way inside? Based on current observations, the contamination here likely existed long before the Chamber of Heaven's designs did. The underground area here is already highly contaminated. But the demonic influence here hasn't spread in all these years. Was it because of her? But why now of all times? Would you have? The Chamber has likely already determined the source of this calamity, but the top priority remains dealing with the crisis at hand. The impact of this demonic catastrophe is unprecedented and well beyond the scope of any of the Chamber's plans. That's clear from the fact that you Chamber Tians has actually called me up. So, what options do we still have? Have all the Chamber's forces on the North Bank withdraw, and at the same time, have the Demon Defense Line pull back 50 kilometers to the south. Abandon all plots, and evacuate to the Core City. After that, we'll need your help activating the Core City's defenses, and re-establishing a defensive line using the Core City as a barrier. This plan doesn't tally up how many people are going to be sacrificed. Demonic taint is not like any ordinary calamity. It must be nipped in the bud. I've never seen Yans make such a rough call before. Who ordered it? Was it your big boss? The great and unknowable old Chan Shi. Just do as you're told, and don't ask too many questions. Hmm. What are you looking at? <laughs> Why would she do this? She probably doesn't want to leave, though. If the demons had already contaminated the land all the way back then, she's been single-handedly suppressing it all this time. Hey, <sighs> What would it feel like to have your consciousness gnawed by demons for a thousand years? Oh, <sighs> shoes, this is... Good grief, uh. There's no other way. There's nothing we can do. You can't whisk everyone away inside a painting. <sighs> and I can't build a castle out of thin air to carry everyone off either. But what about her? What do you mean? Surely she would have known that this day would eventually come. The question is... Where is she now? Crying. The cries came from far away. Baby's wailing. Old people sobbing. Even the crops in the field are mourning. It's like the scene from 40 years ago. That was another famine year. Your shoes is this. You're from the Sui's regulator. Your orders are too far, Dawine. Catastrophes have been frequent in recent years, and harvests have failed year after year. As a proxy, you clearly have the ability to save these crops. Yet you've chosen to stand by and do nothing. The people can't do what I can. If I save them... The people will only think about how to make this miracle happen again. But... I can't save them every time. One day. That will be gone. When when that time comes, the power I wield now will become nothing more than the root of evil that harms others. Is there nothing you can do? There really isn't much that I can do, other than write down my experiences and pass them down to future generations. Once the hard years are over... There will be bountiful years to follow. People have always had to rely on themselves to survive. But how am I to believe that by remaining here, they're doing something good for Yans and its people? How long are you staying here? Until this time next year. Wait for this year's harvest. You'll see. By the way, have you ever worked the land before? It's planting season now. 
And everyone has their hands full. Would you mind lending me a hand? I vaguely remember that the crops grew particularly well that year. The plowed rice piled up into little hills, and the farmer said they wouldn't need to worry about catastrophe for the next few years. You're smiling? I'm really glad. Are you still going to write me up in your report to the Sui's regulator? Are you going to stay here forever? Stay here and help us. With you here, everyone feels safe. I used to have a friend just like you. No, there truly is no other way. Just once, I'm begging you just this one time. And you please save the people here. Only once? You promised me that you'd stay here forever. The room is empty. A warm bowl of soup still sits on the table. I see. You've already, you've already, so... The rain starts to fall. It's raining. A farmer looks up to see a thin cloud covering the crescent moon in the sky. Shortly thereafter, a few drops of cold rain fall. Who was that? In the distance, someone walks deeper into the fields. She walks across the barren fields. And wherever her feet fall, small verdant patches follow. I... Where are you going? She does not respond, and simply continues to walk forward. She walks further and further, until her figure disappears altogether with a thunderclap. How might the heavy rain from just a few days earlier? The rain right now is so tender and fine. As the rain falls, all the cracks in the land fade away. And thus, a soul trap for a thousand years dissipates. All things will come to grow. It's raining. What's it thought? Viking stains blending and blurring with water. The painting sealing this section of space gradually dissipates without a trace. Who just help? <sighs> you were so close. Were you? <sighs> Lord Zuo. I have no intention of becoming your enemy. However, I do hope you take what I said to heart. The days ahead of us are long. And there shall come a time when we meet again. <sighs> this is how it turned out. Just like I said, <sighs> my dear sister. These humans can't do anything without you. May you rest well now. When you next awake, everything will be better. Stage Street 2. Chooses as if sacrifices herself to read Da Huang of the subterranean demonic corruption. Just as the masses think the threat has passed. Ji inserts a bundle of polluted rice stalks into Da Huang's energy core. Oh, it's the hour of Kawi. Who won this round? Down for yourself. I told you I'm not very good at this. Then you should learn. It is not easy to meet you face to face. A decrepit temple. Just as unrelenting as you are. You lock yourself away in this hut to stare at that board day after day. Looking at it. More or less what you see from your ledgers. There exist rules on the board. Just as there exist rules outside the board. All under heaven live for profit. And die for profit. Perceptive as always. They are Ji Yi. Over the year, our brothers and sisters seem to have lived much more pleasant lives after discovering their interests. Our eldest brother seems to have eventually mastered Kung Fu and made his way north to guard the city there. Our eldest sister, on the other hand, dreamt a thousand years away and roamed hither and thither. Living a most happy life, all of us live as happily as we can be. Except her. You know the one. All these years. And I still feel sorry for her. Business must have been going very well for you to have the time and luxury to worry about all this. It wasn't until recently that I comprehended a certain wisdom and learned a way to live. Heaven and Earth are merely a temporary lodging for all beings. While time is a transient guest that passes generations by passes generations by. Man spends an entire lifetime only for a spiritual lodging and a persistent pursuit for accomplishments. Whether this lifetime is long or short makes little difference. If you weren't really seeing everything through, you wouldn't be sitting here. I know what you're going to say. I can help you do what you want to do. However, I will need to borrow something from you in return. You're my second Delta's brother. No need to stand on ceremony. What's mine is yours. Give me your life. From what I've heard, I came to Da Huang from the villages outside. That year. Someone found a wooden basin in the fields with a child who barely knew how to speak. Most likely, he had drifted into the fields from the river that flowed outside the city. Good thing someone found him. Considering there was news of a catastrophe, it's not so difficult to make guesses as to what had happened upstream. You're a lucky boy. Clinging on to dear life in a field of grain. We'll call you Hishans. For grain stocks. This will be your home from now on. I later asked around, in hopes of finding the village where I was born. I found a village... That was completely empty. 
There was nothing but ruined houses and swaths of land covered in origin IUM crystals. What happened to the people here? The land here yields no harvest anymore. Why? Do you see the black rocks? You can't grow food anywhere you find them. And if you can't grow food, people go hungry. Is there lots of land like this? Is there any way we can make these bad rocks disappear? So we can grow food on this land again? Many people have spent many years looking for a way. Would you like to join them? It could take a very long time. You might never see the results. Even after spending your whole life on the effort. Would you regret that? A lot has happened lately. The land I knew is now completely different. The old fields were almost renovated. Too bad heaven is cruel and forced these endless calamities upon us. A farmer by the fields looks up to see the rain falling onto his face. It feels cool and gentle. The withered crops in the field also stand up straight. Their stalks and leaves returning to a crest. Green color. It's Chen Nong. Chen Nong really is back. Wait, what are you doing? Lying around here? Wake up. Hey, wake up. Stop. What's going on? And why'd I get up again? What time is it? It's been half a day since we last saw each other. You had me check the crops in the granary, and said you'd find the culprit behind all the storms in Da Huang. Why are you lying here? So what's the story? How are the crops in the granary? Were they polluted? Have you found the source of the pollution? You saw none of that. What? I went to the granary, only to find the summer harvest all turned a strange red-black color. Not only that, but the soil in the fields is all crusty and salted. I have no idea what happened, but it rained just moments ago. And not only did the soil return to normal, but so did the grains in the granary. Almost like somebody used some tremendous origin IUM arts to cleanse the taint. The taint underground? Who could do that? So we're safe now. This rain, uh, where is she? Is it us? Maurice. Who? Huh? Your teacher. Where is she? We have a few teachers at the Tianchu bureaus. Which one are you talking about? What did you do? <sighs> Whatever do you mean? She's gone. What are you up to? It has always been her decision alone to stay here and guard this place. When have I ever interfered in any way? Was it not Mana? Who locked her away in this land for millennium? Have you lost your marbles? Hmm. Not only do you and the weaky failure want to get yourselves killed, you want to drag all of us down with you. Looks like my little sisters have spent too much time and had too much fun in this mortal realm. To the point that they've forgotten who they really are. How much longer will you to keep up this act? Pretending you're not different. Shut up. <laughs> You've been hiding in your paintings for so long. Yet you are still as impatient as ever. Quite unbecoming of the world's greatest artist. Wouldn't you say? In all these years, I've never seen you so serious. Seems you actually care a lot about your siblings. I'm going to kill you. But as I told you, I am here to help. Oh. Why won't you believe me? Stay back, if you value your life. I really don't have the luxury of resolving this misunderstanding right now. You two will just have to forgive me for this. How come you can control the device? When did you? Our powers came from the same source. On top of that, I deliberately studied a few methods of dealing with my doppelgant deaths. This might perhaps be a little risky and it comes with certain side effects. But that is something I will have to live with. Da Huang should face this crisis. They should not be allowed to rely on others giving their lives to resolve what they have sown. That would simply be too convenient. The man extends his hand, and a black bundle of rice stalks appears in his hand. <sighs> well, and causality. The three of you together may appear as though you can stand up to even heaven itself. That is how her sister has always been. She believed that toiling away in the fields would always yield a good harvest. She believed the lands had more beauty than blemishes, more benevolence than wickedness. But why does the birth of new life always come with the sound of crying, when a frail new life is born on these lands? The very first emotion it must feel is always fear. Well, it is time to wake up. The man inserts the black rice stalks into the enormous device in front of him. Moments later, a heart begins to beat. Stage 6 beginning. Da Huang's energy core has gone out of control, and countless monsters that should only exist in myth and legend begin to manifest all across the farmlands. With no help from the outside, 
The people of Dawain must face this disaster on their own. The cries of foul beast waft through the window of the farmhouse, along with the rays of the rising sun. A mother opens her sleepy eyes, a child in her arms tightly grasping at the hem of her clothes. He wants out a sigh and sits up, thinking of the events of the previous day, as well as the cries of her frightened child throughout the night. A young child rouses from his sleep when he notices his mother's departure. His nose twitches, and tears soon flow down his chubby cheeks. The father adroitly picks up the child and stands next to the window, patting his back and lulling him back to sleep. Uff, uff, there's no need to cry. Look out the window, there's nothing there at all. Look at the flowers, and look at our fields. Everything's fine, so there's no need to cry. However, the child bawls even louder, even stretching his arm to point out the window. The mother and father follow his gesture and look outside, where they see a strange, pale beast standing at the farm on's edge. It stares back, through the window of the family of three. A silent lumberjack picks up his axe, and a wisp of tattered red cloth floats by. He rubs that coarse gash, as if remembering something. A pair of strong, palaced hands not quite bleached, but with distinct joints, coalesces with blood and mud. The hands tied a strand of red silk to his arm, before they fell lifelessly to the ground. Those hands once lifted a heavy weapon, and once stroked his face, and once held a crying child. The hand's master has slightly darkened skin, and when she smiles, she reveals her white teeth and shallow dimples. He stands before the woods along the riverbank. Among the tree trunks are tied strips of red silk, wooden placards engraved with blurry names dangling from them. A gust of wind blows, the branches sway, and the wooden placards make crisp sounds. And then to it, a strange brain sound floats by, and the lumberjack half opens his cloudy eyes. They've returned. I shouldn't be here. What's wrong? An earthquake? I thought the play hadn't been completed yet. But will you H what's going on then? Watch out. That was a close one. My head. What's happening? All the sky poles are out of control. The sky poles seem affected by some disturbance, passing over the people's heads in swarms, blotting out the sky in a manner reminiscent of an insect plague not seen in ages. Look at that. What's with the color of the sun? The people lift their heads and see that the sun has suddenly dipped down into the west, illuminating half the sky blood reed. Everyone is stricken with a sense of fear, a primordial fear that has existed within human hearts since ancient times. Catastrophe, pestilence, disease, damn this realm is no longer the home they have known. What are these things? Pests. How can this be? They're popping out of thin air, straight out of the ground. They're everywhere. What's going on? Why are these animals not listening? Are you okay? They're more like the monsters from popular operas than pestilence beasts. They're even popping out of the ground? Let's give this a try, Shiba. A gust of wind suddenly rises, and the monster's body is torn into fine threads. However, it snaps right back to its original form in an instant and continues to crawl forward. More and more monsters begin to rise from the soil. Wherever they go, pups wither and the land dries up. It didn't do anything. What you doing? What are these things? Jibba. This isn't something I can explain in a sentence or two. Zula plucks a strand of silk with his lawn's worth, but before he can raise it to a level, a silk thread disappears on the wind. Are they the same? A candle holder looks up toward the center of the city. A tower of white jade stands there, emitting an ominous light. A sky-bound white jade capital. Of twelve pagodas in five cities, the ancients once envisioned a city that reached the heavens, but now, it has become a source of calamity. He did it. In the end, how much do you really know? There's no time to explain. He shangs the first thing. Do me a favor and rescue all the people here. Go gather all the farmers and have them stick together as much as possible. Now, whatever you do, don't leave anyone alone. Remember, don't be afraid of them. Even if you have to force yourself, do not feel fear. What about you? What are you going to do? I'm going to shut down that device. You're doing this on your own again? This is my duty, even if I have to put my life on the line. What kind of talk is that? Did anyone ask for your life? Why are you always up on your own pedestal, acting as if everyone's looking to you to save them? Well, Zhao He is right. This isn't a problem you can solve on your own. It's you should face it. What should we be doing now? This is happening because of the contamination on the north bank of the river. The flood allowed them to penetrate Da Huang's defenses. Don't panic. The Qians is from the Chamber of Heaven's designs is on the way. But first, we need to organize everyone together. Strength in numbers. That's how we'll look after one another. Come together and protect those in need. Let's get going. Bring butts. Ron W. Anki. 
Keonbia, I have seen your name on the Sui's regulator's roster. I hung up those robes a long time ago. You suppressed the Shen He's Hong and traced the criminal's master plan. You were the Sui's regulator's most storied candle holder of the last century. Forty years ago, you left the Sui's regulator to become a magistrate in Da Huang, and you've stayed here ever since. Why? My duty is to keep an eye on anything that might threaten Yans. However, Shuzuzuzuz is not one of those things. Shuzuzuzuz used her own life to cleanse the demonic contamination beneath Da Huang? She did. But by some unknown means. She forcibly powered up the core city with demon fragments, resulting in the strange monsters we see now. I failed to detect a criminal plan. A clear dereliction of duty. But I've heard that the chamber's defensive line along the northern bank is imperiled. How can we allocate the manpower to defend Da Huang? You've got the situation right. At the moment, we can only rely on ourselves. These creations come from the power of that proxy. And are also shadows of the demons fueled by fear. This struggle is also one of courage in the human heart itself. How do we stop these monsters, though? The heart can't move without its limbs. The TUMUTians have already gone to sever the connections between the various plates in the core city. Our job is to protect the people here. I'll see it done. A candle holder's duty is to carry the fire that drives out the shadows of the fern and ET. However, the shadows that loom over the people do not come solely from fur and mutts. Light the lamp. And let it remain lit. Do not forget that. I'll stop him. I will. This is the debt that you must collect. Would it be right to say? Long time no see. You shouldn't have come back. At least you weren't the one who directly ordered my arrest. For Shuzuzu's sake. I can allow you to see her. But after that, be gone. Any further transgressions. However, and you'll have only yourself to blame for any lingering sentiments being set aside. Lingering sentiments? Sounds quite nice when you put it like that. If by lingering sentiments, you're referring to trapping her here for a millennium to be your work beast. Your tone suggests you would prefer... We went back to the days when Great Yans was hunting all of you. Oh no. Life is self-centered and zero-sum. And that much is as true for beasts as it is for humans. I simply want to make a deal with you. I promise to you the successful completion of the Twelve Pagodas in Five Cities, free from the threat of demons and catastrophes. The next three years shall be beneficent. Such that you will have ample time to stockpile food and recuperate. I ask that my sister be freed from this place. You make it sound like Da Huang won't be able to overcome this challenge without you. The demons run rampant. And catastrophes are capricious. You should be fully aware of Da Huang's situation. How do I know I can trust you? Is it not amply clear to the Sui's regulator what our abilities are? I will do as I stated and uphold my side of the deal, if you pull out. However, I will be forced to collect other assets as collateral. Just know that I, too, have lingering sentiments when it comes to this land. I did promise to let you leave. You will do as you stated it. But alone, if it's my life you would collect. We'll see just what these demons' blasphemous methods can do. The energy core activated on its own. But how? It's not ready yet. These readings. Is this as a joke? This is enough to power a sizable nomadic city for 300 years. Out of the way. I'll deal with this. Hmm. The energy core has gone out of control. He's taken control and is using it to create monsters. Spare me the abstract. Nobody knows this device better than me. On the other hand, Assistant Minister Nings. I don't need to remind you that the current situation is due to the failures of the Ministry of Rights and the Sui's Regulator. Out of control. Since the day I joined the Tian Chi Rozan began studying engineering, the three words I've come to hate most are out of control, 
so I place a lot more stock in the Grand Commandant's discrimination over the meritocracy that the Grand Tutor speaks of. You'll have plenty of time to impeach the Ministry of Rights after this crisis is over. Our top priority is to cut the connection between the plates and the core city. If we can't regain control at that point, we must destroy the core city. I understand you don't appreciate the way I fawn upon the powerful figures, but I'm not so petty as to fail to grasp the overall situation. You can go now. I will stop the device. All by yourself? This is my project. My own projects have never gone out of control. Nor will they ever. If it is to fail, then I should be the one to destroy it. And pay whatever price I must. You want to help me finish this project? What? I'll find you a sagacious partner. Assistant Minister Wan. I trust that our business will go smoothly. I see how much you value this project. The material aid I sent is a token of my sincerity. And you want me to pay for those supplies? Yeah, that's fine. Name your price. You misunderstand. Assistant Minister Wan. What are these bubbles worth? Compared to you. I've forgotten. What is the annual salary a minister earn in the Ministry of Engineering? And how long would you like to occupy that position? Assistant Minister Wan. Nothing to be surprised about. I know how difficult it was for you to rise from a humble scholar to a second-tier official. For all the hemming and hawing in the court. <sighs> Which is why you took such a great risk to help a certain Mandarin deal with the aftermath of you men. Are you threatening me? <sighs> I'm only out to make a deal here. It is to our mutual benefit that this project be completed. Fine. I accept. <sighs> you frantically agreed to the terms. Allow me to remind you that once you've signed this contract, you will have to pay the price. Come what may. On under heaven live for profit. On die for profit. Do you think the only thing that matters to me is this minister's robe? It's the lot of you who underestimate me. What's wrong? Why did you stop? He Shang Si, I'm actually a bit scared. What's happening with all the farmlands? Monsters are popping out from all over the place. Like in the opera, sir. To be honest. I'm scared too, but I also know there are a lot of people even more scared. And they don't know what to do. There's still something I can do. I can still protect them. Big Buffalo, even though I always call you a stupid Buffalo, you're actually the smartest person I've ever met. You know so much, much more than anyone else when it comes to farming. Which is why no matter what happens, you have to swear to keep yourself safe. Your dreams will surely come true, whatever you do. I don't think nobody cares about you just because you have no family. It's just just. What's gotten into you all of a sudden? I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm scared that I'm blurting out all the key theory deep down. Sir, if only Shuzuzuzuzuz were here, she'd know what these things are. <laughs> what did I just say? Who is Shuzuzuzuz? What? There was someone with us. She knew everything. What are you talking about? I don't know. A couple of days ago. Someone stopped me along the riverbank and told me a story. Over the riverbank. How about this song? Not a fan. Huh? It's come home soon. The only song you like? Did I tell you that I got into a fight with He Shangs? He said that if I kept skipping school, all the good students would go off to be AIZIO, but I'd have to stay here. So mean. Don't you think he's just trying to provoke me for no reason? What's wrong with the way I'm anyway? I just want to stay here and wait for my parents to come back. Huh? <laughs> Why are you chasing me off again? Okay? Okay? I'm leaving. Well, watch where you're swinging that axe. He shangs. Hi? There's someone on the other side of the river who hasn't evacuated yet. Green butts, don't run off. I'll be fine. The Miu Chanko only listens to me, so I have to bring him back. Everyone in Da Huang's gonna be safe and sound. I'll see you soon. In the center city. Stage 7 end. The people of Da Wang demonstrate unshakable unity and resolve to protect their homes. Perhaps because of a deep connection to this land, a vague consciousness reconstitutes amidst the chaos. Uncle? Niet Uncle? Where are you? Don't try to fight those monsters. Okay? Come out already. And let's get out of here together. He's immersed in his own battlefield. The enemies he faces are unspeakable. His tongue rigid and dead inside his mouth. The people he loved have already left, never to see the next spring. He lifts his weapon high into the air. All he feels is that he is something he must protect. But, what is it? The sound of a flute slowly drifts in. Anka? Anka? I'm right here. Hurry. Don't stay in the forest. Let's get out of here together. Let's go home.
You think I'm scared of you. Get lost. You ugly thing. Huh? Uh. A long axe lodges itself in the chest of the strange monsters. It struggles to get up. But at least, the silk strands fall apart and disperse onto the ground. Long after the axe had been released, the lumberjack's hands remained fixed in the motion of throwing his weapon, unable to see clearly. He lowers his head and turns his ears, carefully listening to the sounds around him. There you are. Uncle, finally found you. I'm over here. Hurry. Come on over. I'll take you to safety. The lumberjacks continues to listen carefully, and looks toward Grain Buds. He then picks up his axe again, and turns to head deeper into the woods. Uncle, Uncle, it's dangerous over there. You need to turn back. Grain Buds brings her flute to her lips again, tries hard to steady her breathing, and begins to play another song. The flowers have bloomed, so hurry on home. Listen, listen, is I who calls you back. And the lumberjacks does not stop. Several monsters like Ron in the grass in front of Grain Buds. His cloudy eyes are unable to discern the things in front of him, the world spinning endlessly before his eyes. The blood in his veins roars, drowning out all other sound, until a sharp cry pierces his ears like a needle. Triple eight. Grain Buds turns to try to run, but then she raises her flute again, and a sharper sound reaches his ears. The flowers have bloomed. The hurry on home. Listen, listen, is I who calls you back. He takes a step forward. A tiny white finger is holding his hand. <sighs> Uncle. Let's go. You don't know how to get back. Do you? Why don't you want to go back? Are you afraid you'll scare the others? I promise. Nobody's going to be afraid of you anymore. They won't treat you like a freak. If anyone tries to badmiss you again, I'll bonk them on the head with my flute. So, let's go back together, okay? A red silk tied to his arm suddenly loosens and is blown away by the wind, floating lazily into the sky. Large teardrops roll from the lumberjack's cloudy eyes. A grain buds does not notice. Run, Uncle. How many more? Is there really no end to these monsters? All we can do is try our best to block them here. How is it possible to stop them from being afraid? Who's ever seen a battle like this before? A vast field sprawls in front of him. Thoughtless, terrifying looking monsters continuing to sprout from the ground. Behind those two, a large number of people queue up in a long line and march slowly toward the city center. Cries erupt from the team. The TUN Mutians has barely managed to erect a defensive line with their origin IUM arts, standing between the people and the monsters. The ground beneath their feet shakes, and a few more cries burst from the crowd. What happened? The plate was just disconnected from the core city. Control of the various soil parameters in the experimental plate depend on the core city's power supply. Now that it's been cut off, the field will become fallow. Ciao Biaidu Z. Where did these damn monsters come from? All our years of hard work. Oh, and because of you. I've never been wronged like this in all my years here. Oh right, why the hell should we run from these? These beasts want to destroy our land and swallow up our crops, so we're gonna fight them to the very end. Come on, let's take the fight to them. Be careful, everyone not. Someone picks up a hole left in the field, and turns to rush at an unknown monsters. The hole falls heavily upon the monsters' head, causing the creature to stagger. The farmers desperately pick up whatever objects lie at their disposal, carrying stones and farm tools at the monsters'. A half hazardly tossed bottle of pesticide shatters against it, causing the monsters to whimper. It's... working. It's... it's dead. It's working. We did it. I did it now. These things were transformed from the pests in the field. All at GEBAC. They're not monsters at all. Nothing to be scared of. Gather up. And let's get rid of the beasts mess in with our crops. Others answer the call. More and more people picking up whatever tools they can get their hands on and joining the defensive line. Some even sing at the top of their lungs. But the wild plains, rivers and mountains come. Harsh as the east wind, the frozen moon, heaven's fickle, raging thunder. May the scent of rice fill heaven and earth, north and south, and fear neither drought nor flood. If only I was the wind and spring rain, bringing spring to the people. <laughs> Uncle, don't. A few more steps, and we'll be there. Uh, Ooh, to the way. Ooh, to the way. Uh, Uncle, what's wrong? <laughs> You need pressure on your wound. Don't worry. It'll be okay. We're almost there. I've carried injured burden beasts home before. And you don't look any heavier than them. Trust me. I can take you back. All of you. Get out of my way. Don't die. Stay away. Stay away. Sam. Her tiny body falls to the ground. The sound ringing in the lumberjacks his ears. He braces himself and lifts his weapon again. Do we are. Oh, tell you. Azushi. All right. Come on down. Your mind has already reached its limit. Stand down. I don't want to have to kill another apprentice with my own two hands. Go back. 
There's a clever young lady waiting out there. We can't let her go without her parents, even if she'll never recognize you again. It's been difficult for all of you. I thought I'd head back to De Hoang to recover from my injuries, but imagine running into something like this. It better hope I don't get my hands on you. Needle prick. The golden eccentric looks around and reaches for her belt. Where's my fan? A strange fabric seems aware of the danger and hesitates, not daring to draw closer. My sorry disciples even asked how I'm not scared of these things. I flipped the question around. After killing so many of them, why are these things not afraid of me? A billowing current of air sweeps up. A Tianxi's golden figure uplifting light and heat into a spatial distortion. Incandescent white flames outlining the chasm in the wilderness. She snaps her fingers lightly. Grrr. <sighs> Flax. <sighs> Mulberry and fields. <sighs> Grow as the sun rises, sun. <sighs> Drive away all evil. <sighs> and bring new light to heaven and earth. <sighs> la la la. <sighs> A cocoon has formed. It is time to weave. A foul beast flies by, in a domain not meant for foul beasts. In this place, the sun, the moon, the stars, the wind, the frost, the rain, the snow, the mountains, the rivers, none of it is meant to exist in the first place. But, uh, this particular foul beast picks up an ear of rice, flaps its wings, and tears on the peak of a hill. Its heart beats, and beats, as if something is about to burst out. A gust of wind blows by, causing the saplings to wobble. The rivers flow without cease, the water coursing, the mountains and rivers rise, the earth and soil rumbling, the trees plant their roots, their shadows swaying, as if sensing something. The foul beast takes flight once more with the ear of rice in its mouth, the seeds of rice falling into the boundless patties. Swish, swoosh, swish, swoosh, a pair of eyes open. You, you come back? CJ beginning, within the chaos, Nyan, Duskses. And chooses as it's have to face the question once more. Who am I? It's black. Unfathomable depths. Without a shred of sunlight. A stifling atmosphere almost feels as heavy as the roof's own weight. The roofs of a tomb. What's going on? Why am I back here? Wait. Hold thing. Sit the I came to see you. A sound emanates from behind the heavy door before her. You've been sleeping for so long. And you're still as pissy as ever were. Drop the scary act already. Oh, can you even do anything after lying here all this time? Nothing to be afraid of. Fei Tu. Xiang Shu Ziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziz
A mere mortal life is honestly worthless to you. Hey. <laughs> Don't go that far. I still like you mortals a lot. <sighs> you look at us as if you're watching a play. Your casual acts can add a little marvel to the show and change the fates of countless people. <sighs> Sometimes you'll even be in the mood to join us for a few songs. But in the myriad of plays, <sighs> you're the only one off stage. <sighs> you sit alone all alone. Jeez. I didn't think I'd get this kind of hallucination, Nation. I'm tired. Hmm, just take the swords. It's made for proper combat. Let me see if the story ends differently. Sir, a young man asked me to deliver this two package to you before the day of dawn ZHI. Don't have the guts to see me in person. I suppose. He's passed on by now. The bag is empty. Countries turn to rust. A brief spark in the wind. A bubble gone without a trace. What's this? Sir, I've been anticipating this for a long time. You've been waiting for me? I'm puzzled by something that I'd like you to clarify. Do elaborate. I went to collect references at the edge of the city today, and saw an odd foul beast perched by the riverbank. I've never seen a foul beast so beautiful. I was just about to whip out my brush and paper when it flapped its wings and vanished from sight. I tried to paint it from what I could remember. I could not do it. Just let it go. Some things are beyond your control. That holds true for others, but I still call myself a painter for the time being. So I'll always want to capture it somehow. I've painted quite a lot these past few years. I always thought one had to paint plenty of paintings and see many sights to make life worthwhile. But I finally realized that paintings are ultimately inanimate objects. What do you mean? The scenes I paint turn into a passing cloud a moment later. The more I paint, the more insignificant I feel my paintings become. That's only natural, no. One can only dream of seeing the entire land if one won't even make it to a hundred years of age. No, I think you still don't understand. So I, I'd like to ask for some thoughts on this undeserving work of mine. This is a painting. My painting. This is the view we ignorant mortals see. Even one like you with all the views you have seen are only a drop in the ocean when compared to the tumultuous changes this land has experienced over the last millennium. Please. Take a good look once more, for we only have this one dusks, a brush, mean scroll, as besotted as drunk, one dusks, two ass. They're growing well. Did you plant all these? The people here did. As you said, I can't use my abilities to meddle with their growth. I'll disappear one day. But these people will still be here for a long time. You've worked so hard. It's been a while. How very strange. That brother of mine has been telling me he's seen you in his dreams lately. Why do you keep thinking about me? Are you getting nostalgic with age? You know how to make fun of me too now. The people here all remember a Shen Nan, who compiled the 24G's key solar terms, <laughs> taught them how to till the land, and even risked her life to cultivate a vast expanse of frozen soil into fertile fields. How can I bear that title on my own? We achieved it all together. So I put everything on my shoulders. It's been so long. Is there still a difference between you and me? She told me I needn't care about the differences between man and beast. That I should just live as a human. I didn't expect you to stay here even now. I promised you I would. To stay and guard this land. So people wouldn't have to go hungry. Oh, she this is this is. Have you ever resented me? A thousand years. How can you call this devotion? This is clearly incarceration. Even though your consciousness is gone, you are still trapped here by your ties to this land. Rather than go free, all because of one mistake I made. I don't resent you for it, only myself, for not going north in your place. I only realized when we parted ways, I had my own selfish motives, a human selfishness. I wanted to beg you to stay, to continue helping the people here. All of my kin need you, but I wasn't sure if you would love them, as you loved me. I'm afraid I've let you down. So we failed in the end. What? You never found the seeds. And I never managed to grow crops of origin by you untainted soil. We couldn't even protect this land. Man can prevail over nature. But when will that happen for real? Shoes as it is. Do you regret it? You knew that everything I said would come to pass, didn't you? Yes. I always knew. You shouldn't have met me here. You're only a shred of consciousness left in this device. And I'm a memory within. DHA, uh... You're still here. I'm always with you. 
a command to want and rage. In greed for life and fear for death. I nearly forgot why I even created you back then. No place of place amidst high mounts or waters far. No matter to me free amidst the human realm. I've been muddle-headed for so long that I even lost track of why I'm awake. Whoever said you had to paint the entire realm to be considered an artist? <laughs> Just paint a realm. I'm true it be. The painter brandishes her blade, and mounts rise in succession. I am me, and what I see is all. I... wake up. I director can't be sleeping on set, right? That's crazy irresponsible. What's wrong with taking a snooze when you're tired? Which one are we shooting this time? Oh, isn't that the screenplay I stashed away in the bottom of my drawer? I swear, this year is the last one. Anything can be spun into a good story. That's what legends and strange tales are. I got to ask. Leolava, what makes you so willing to humor me for so long? A legendary weapon you promised. When are you going to give it to me? Sure enough. You're still after that. Would you miss me if I were to vanish one day without a trace? For good. Nope. If that day comes, no one will remember you. The weapons, films, cities, and those films you made will all vanish. You know that. You're right. I shouldn't be seeing you here either. <sighs> yeah, you called it. <sighs> the dumb stuff I waste time on again and again all amounts to nothing in the end. But I can't help it. I just want to have some fun and leave some memories behind. Leave something behind and have fun. <sighs> That's enough for me. Thanks, Leo Lava. It was pretty fun making trouble with you at Rhodes Island. Humiliating. I ended up giving myself a lecture with something I crafted with my own hands. <sighs> Letting people go through these old and irrelevant memories. Just like that is really something on memories. Well, see enough of that. We answered that question when we managed to split off from chaos. You're just a heart. So stop dreaming about taking us back in. We worked hard to be free from that pitch black tomb. We're not about to go back to living under your shadow. Whole thing? So I'll... Two bits. Two Stage A10. Chooses as his consciousness were gathered in the fur and MUT's heart and stabilizes the rampaging energy core. The crisis is over, and the people witness a magnificent sunset, while the mastermind G seems to be scheming something else behind the curtain. There's too many. We can't handle them all the more. We might not even manage to save the nearby fields. The situation is dire. We should prioritize saving the people. Am I imagining things? They don't seem as fearsome as before. What's that tone? This plate is separating from the core city. As I thought, the vitality of these monsters is bound to Da Huang's energy core. So once we break that connection, they'll go weaker. Hold on. Has everyone managed to evacuate here? We notified the entire city. But is everyone here? Everyone from residential sections 1 to 4 is here. Sections 9 through 12. All present. Everyone from 6 to 8 is here. But we haven't heard back from the group dispatched to section 5. What? They were on their way from the city center when they encountered a patch of farmlands under attack. Things were going badly. And that's when we lost contact. The energy core has broken down. And our communication systems went with it. I'll go look for them. Wait. You're always chide me for acting tough. But now you're dashing ahead of us. We don't even know how many monsters are swarming the place. And you plan on charging forward alone? That's my experimental plot. I know it better than anyone else. The residents there usually help me with the farm work. I even lied to them, saying my research was going well late lately. It's fine if you want to go. Just take me along. I run fast too. I can help. You're not from here. You've got nothing to do with the people here. And you're even a year younger than I am. Hisheng's was promoted to an intermediate non-GYE Yanqi in the year 1101 at the age of 17. So no need to act tough at such a critical juncture. But... Do you normally speak like this back home? I and EV are speak like this. Enough talk. Let's go already. Is the legend a lie? <sighs> the blurry rice paddies stretch to the horizon. This is a patch of living. Turtle land. A wind plays ever so. A wave of rice is sung. A nascent consciousness is born here. And a voice speaks to her. They're bad. They seem exhausted. Are you alright? So, you're already awake. 
Where am I? Have I always been here? Why do I have memories from long ago? I saw so much. Lore. Yes. Plague. Damon. A disaster from above the roof swashes over the land, leaving only devastation behind, followed by endless war and upheaval. Civilizations perish. Life fills with dread. Why am I trapped in here? This who am I? I feel so. Frightened. The outside. is frightening. Pain. I can hear the cries of many. How can I put a stop to all this suffering? I remember now. Someone gave me a name. The weeds overgrow, browning the entire land. The longest arc of night condenses into this single moment. No. You're just a shadow. My shadow. But it isn't your suffering. It belongs to the people living on this land. You fear because you haven't really lived yet. You don't know how this great land truly is. This world isn't frightening at all. Like you've never seen crops being harvested, or people cheerfully laughing. You've never seen countless creatures vying to survive, enduring hardship, and continuing to thrive. You should take a closer look. If you get the chance, I am no longer an arrogant and lonesome for an MUT. Or am I a solid rift all on my own? I have lived a real life here. Together with the infinite variety life on this continent, a drop of dew drips down, injecting life that spans across time into the land. Sleep, is I? Twilight red sets on the stalks. These earthly strivings kiss by dew. Millennia reap me now a single tender shoot. Over here. Out. In a te 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 Stay away. W a te. Er. Are we saved? Uncle Wang, why are you still here? Are you alright? Xiao he. I knew you'd come back. Din ji wala. These beasts just appeared out of nowhere and started chewing up all the crops here. But don't worry. We protected the plot well. And didn't let a single beast pass us. Uncle Wang. It's alright. He's only fainted from Shaw. The whole field is sinking inch by inch by inch, and huge fissures can be seen across the fields in the distance. The communication equipment's not working at all. The TUMUTians just don't know there's still people here, and they've already begun disconnecting the plate. Let's hurry and move before it's too late. What a deep ravine. Have we been left behind? Pardon me. A young candle holder carries the far on his own, and leaps into the air, crossing the gap in just a few steps. You? You're amazing. The Ola goes back and forth between the two separated plates, transporting one by one those left behind to safety on the other side. But the space between the plates continues to expand at a speed visible to the naked eye, and his steps gradually grow heavier, until the last trip, when a gust of wind blows him back up as he almost loses footing. Careful now. Many thanks. Everyone's safe now. So hold on to me and I'll bring you over too. There's more of them. Don't get distracted. You're using your arts too much. No need to worry about me. The students of the township bureaus aren't as weak as you think. A duo work together to repel a few monsters, but as they dispatch the beasts the vertical disparity of both plates escalates before their eyes. The distance of about fifteen meters seems an unsurmountable chasm to the two. Damn it. Are we stuck here? This plate is about to fall, so we best prepare for impact. Find somewhere with soft soil to hide it, and we might- I never noticed till now that Da Huan's plates were built so high. To Willa, how many people did we save? Don't worry. I did a head count earlier and everyone who was here has already made it over. Cheer up. We just have to find a way to make it back alive. And this rescue mission will be a complete success. The legends always say as long as everyone stands together, we'll make it through any crisis, no matter how they reek it's. Everyone's been taking care of me all these years. I've never managed to pay them back. What today? Ishan struggles to finish his words. And Zuola realizes a bright red stain is seeping through from the other's white shirt. You heard? When did you all stop the bleeding? Zuola, let me give you something. Right now. This is my Yanchi apparatus with important data inside. You have to keep it safe, no matter what happens. All right. I'll take it. Ishung's ties an Origin IUM device tightly onto Zuola's hand. He hits the switch, and the little thing rapidly unfolds into a kite. What are you doing? I was hard on you before. But I've realized, you have a good heart, so I can't. Leave you here, here, here for. The youth exerts the last vestiges of his strength, and a gust of wind rises. Zuolus flies into the air carried by the kite before he can even react. A plate below shrinks bit by bit, along with he shuns his silhouette. But Zuolus can make out the shapes of a few remaining monsters on the field rushing towards the shrinking figure. I don't know where you came from, but I'm not scared. Huh? Blinked. You awake. Hey, wake up. Wait, you hear that? Seems like he's still breathing. <laughs> Make way. Yeah, Mia? Stop. 
Looking me? I don't have any treats on me. He shins as opens his eyes to find himself lying in a field, surrounded by a plethora of worried faces. It seems to have returned to a day he does not remember. The first day he came to this land. Is it Kaisuba? Everyone all right? Everyone was about to look for you when me and Mian suddenly showed up with you in tow. But why did you? Thank you for saving me. The monsters. Did we beat them? The dark clouds scatter. The bloody afterglow fades. Another sunset sprinkles a golden twilight all over the fields. Is the... Is it over? It's over. We won. What? What Chan Nong did that? We've managed it, Tu Ying Di did. Someone's managed to get the energy core under control. We did it. Looking back at it all, isn't this the birth of a new legend? Now that things have died down, we should head back. Wait, if my eyes don't deceive me. In an overgrown field nearby stands a single rice stalk. You will us. Help me out. Why do you want to go back? It's still dangerous. What is it? It worked. We did it. W.N. King. The 10,000 King of Fertile Fields. All's not lost. There's still hope for us. The youth happily carries the rice plant with a slight lunacy to his laughter. What exactly? He'll probably just say, you wouldn't understand, even if I told you. Right? I'll just take you at your word. For these creatures to grow, they must endure a calamity. Those that survive will break out of their cocoons. Those that do not will have their lives quietly snuffed out in the darkness. No living being can escape the cycle of destruction and rebirth. What exactly is he planning? We meet again. Your presence here must mean you figured out my plans. Lord Zuo. What are you doing? As you can see. Weaving what? Something for sale once it's completed. For sale to whom? It's standard practice to keep customer information confidential. What's the... on the cloth? Scenes from across the country. Or perhaps to phrase it in your words. The splendor of Yans, I spent many years traveling across Yans. Visiting every city. And Da Huing is my final stop. Only today do I consider this bolt of cloth complete. Countless bolts of silk and satin seem to descend from the heavens. Every bolt a city, a piece of history, a facet of worldly plight, a nation's splendor. No, oh, it should be the hearts of the people. Just look at how brilliant the brocade is. All the colors of their souls I've seen. How could I dislike this mortal realm? Stage 9 beginning. Everything G did was to weave his eye hundred scenic portraits of great Yanzes. I and this plan all began over a thousand years ago. So this is what heaven looks like to those in Sinai camp souls. For the first time, I walked out of the chaos and void into these vast lands. Where did I come from? And where am I going? I still carry memories of that enormous body. And I seem to have some kind of divine power as well as a lifespan that far exceeds those of the masses I see before me. But like a confused child, I followed the people I saw and imitated what they did. After a great length of time, I met the teachers. There is a barren swath of land in the northern reaches of Yans. I'm trying to reclaim and farm the uncultivated fields there with the locals. It's fun to watch crop after crop grow out of the soil. If you don't know where to go, why don't you come give us a hand? What is the place like? <laughs> it's much colder than the towns here. <laughs> Plus, those things from beyond the door are a bit dangerous. But you wanted to find out what man is like. It might just be the perfect place for you. You'll have all the time you need to find your answer. That was when I found out for the first time that there was such a concept as camaraderie between living beings. Maybe this is why they were able to defeat those enormous beings. How strange. It was hailing furiously last night, but the crops are all fine. Maybe luck is on our side. Maybe heaven saw how hard we worked the fields and decided to have mercy. <laughs> Gee, this is your doing, isn't it? I simply thought it would be a shame for Hale to destroy the hard work and effort that everyone put in over the last six months. Everything in this world lands moves according to its own set of rules. When a season's harvest is ruined, it can bury it to fertilize the soil and help the next year's crops grow even better. You save this field's harvest this season, but how many fields are there like this one in Yans? How many mouths are there to feed at the mercy of heaven? You did this out of the kindness of your heart, but mankind needs to learn to survive on these lands by itself. Will you leave one day, too? Of course. But this swath of land will be here forever. Life will exist forever. Everything under heaven has its own position. 
but we live between heaven and earth, like rootless trees, a stint to drift about, no cause and no effect, no beginning and no end. Where should we return? Arms change, change. You're a merchant here for grain. <sighs> there are droughts everywhere this year. I heard the granaries in the north have a surplus, though I'm here to purchase grain to resell where the situation is more dire. Heaven and her rainstorms show no mercy. The farmers have it hard. A famine here is not necessarily a bad thing for farmers, though. You speak nonsense. My good gentleman, how could a famine be a good thing for the farmers? Simple wisdom. The more severe the famine, the more their harvests earn them. Compare 500 cat ties at 1 1 per caddy to 100 cat ties at 10 1 per caddy. Even a three year old can calculate which is the better deal. From a seller's perspective, I've lived here ever since I was a child. The only way I know to use food is to feed the masses and save lives. To think such wisdom existed in the lands outside. You haven't seen what it's like outside the Huang. Not everyone is as young that can see only the abyss but not the water that fills it. If all one does is guard these plots, how is he or she meant to understand all the wisdom under heaven? Young man, my caravan needs someone to help manage our affairs. Might you be interested in coming with us to the lands outside? Get me a room, where the old rules. The cargo goes in the warehouse. You pay first, then you get your room. You said you wanted to get in the tea business because of all the tea farms sprouting up around Chang Shu's as this as this over the last two years. How come you bought out these inns instead? How much do you reckon a truckload of Shang Shu's as this greens can earn when transported from here to BAIZO? And how much in tariffs will the court take? If the journey to BAIZO is uneventful, a 20% profit would be a fairly good return to me. Now how much do you reckon I can make here with all the tea merchants coming and going? Even the ones I'm willing to pay their taxes? When you put it that way, certainly you are in a more lucrative business. But I also noticed that you withheld some of the cargo for the mandarins. Now that is my other line of business. The people working in the government need something to show, too. Are you not afraid of the mandarins looking for trouble or the tea merchants turning against you? That wouldn't be a very good bargain to them. Without me, the tea merchants would have to pay their fair share in taxes or take the risk to find another route. Without me, the government would have to spend a hefty sum to get their hands on tips about smugglers. Or say the merchants ended up revolting. How much would it cost to quell this revolt? They went for all three parties. An unusually lucrative line of business. You've been in Sean Truzes's for long enough. I'm starting to grow tired of the cuisine here. Let's hand the business off and head east. What kind of business awaits us there? Mining. Green transport. Whatever earns us money, that's what we'll do. This time, I mainly want to go home to have a look around. You asked me before if there exists a wisdom that stands true everywhere. All under heaven live for profit, and die for profit. The law and morality, faith and honor. There is nothing under heaven that cannot be accounted for in a ledger. Thank you for that. That is indeed what I saw. I'm starting to understand. My dear sister, I have settled an account all these years. Each of us have lived lives across Yanzan, recorded our own gains and losses on our respective ledgers. Tej found his own path. But he found himself an outlier in this mortal realm, a place in which he cannot love. Hey, or even let go. Lings has lived a carefree life. This realm cannot bind her. She finds her own joy. A prophet, and our younger sisters. Not necessarily incisive, but they have little that troubles them. They are breaking even. As for Yi, our second eldest brother. Well, Jesus dead. No matter how you slice it, a tremendous loss. Our family has been under the Yain Sea thumb for over a millennium. I truly cannot see how we are gaining anything from this transaction. <laughs> Most important. <sighs> My dear sister, has the question of profit really never crossed your mind? A substitute. I place my bet on a conclusion. For revenge. <sighs> and for us? <sighs> how? Is it even possible? One twelfth is no match for the whole. What are your chances? How confident are you? I've worked this out over a long time. There are 19 lines on a wiki board, both horizontal and vertical. All the moves one could make have already been calculated. 
The white player is compensated seven and day half points, giving black less than half a winning chance. Truly, a most difficult task on my own. That is why I need your help. If I were to tell you there remains a shred of hope and that this is the one and only way, way, way. Would you be willing to put your wealth and life on the line? You catch up fast. Perhaps it's time to give an explanation for your actions. What form of explanation would you like? <sighs> Lord Zou, you roused demons to lay harm to the citizenry. Seized the country's fortifications. And even plotted against the other proxies. Given your actions, your crimes are far worse than Wings. I may have some objections to your charges. But what would you like to do here? Hand over the cloth and return to the capital under Sui's regulator supervision. And what will I get in return? A chance at a fair trial. A shame that it is not a price I am willing to pay. You would make an enemy of Yen's. If I would, what could you possibly do? The Wildless takes a step forward and Dunchi Thessa's blade. Is it really so much fun to pick on mortals? It's here. Not bad. Good, good. You managed to tail him all the way here. Hmm, gotta hand it to you. <sighs> but this is a family matter. Yusui's regulator folks will have to give us some personal space. Don't talk like we're all getting along. What do you think this is? <laughs> but uh, the test... Huh. He were actually trying to off us. <sighs> Don't be ridiculous. So you've been laying low all these years to weave this cloth. He needs this before he goes to see it. Having traveled all around Yens, I thought it a shame when I finally decided to weave Da Huang into it. So you two are in on this together. And he's finished preparing already. I should have figured. You get along with the wiki failure the best. Hmm. <laughs> don't act like you don't know what taking your cloth out of this place means. This is a straight up declaration of war against Yens. Huh? Your son, he. My third brother, and truth be told, out of all my older siblings, you're one of the ones I like best. I always feel like the two of us crank out some pretty sick ideas. Remember how I helped you sell fakes of Dusk's paintings that one time? You what? But I'm sorry. This is a way overdoing it, even for me. <sighs> From the looks of it, you're not on my side either, Dusk's. In your dream. It's been a few centuries since we've had a family reunion with more than three of us. To think that the first thing we'd be doing is fighting among ourselves. Just like all those years ago. What's the deal? Reminiscing on old times. If we can talk this out peacefully, I would rather us not come to blows. How could I possibly raise a hand against my little sisters? Drop the big talk already. It's two against one. The odds are stacked against you. Well, we'll just have to see how it all turns out. This time, not even the army of that great wild hunt years ago could stop me. Stage nine end. Shoes as 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 and Wang reach a deal. D and Wang finally take away the I hundred scenic portraits of great Yan's as as. I and peace returns to Da Huang on a path in the fields. The old Tianchi blocks Ji's way. She wishes to pose one final question to him. Whoever thought it'd snow like this? A field's ridges have been covered with a thick layer of despair-inducing white. The bits of yellow dotting it are the heads of grain that were laboriously planted only a month prior. How many plants would still be alive after ten days? One dares not think. A M.U.S. beast stumbles around, arching into the silent field of wheat. Even the sparse crops in front of it are an unexpected joy. It sniffs around carefully. Calculating how much it needs to tide it over and how much would be left to take back to the cave to feed its skin. Until a thick metal hole crashes down on its spine. Three more heads of wheat are gone. The angry farmer snatches the beast that has been ruining the crops. So angry that he wants to skin it to make a meal. However, the carcass is so emaciated that it hardly weighs more than a few tiles. With a long sigh, the farmer digs a hole in the ground and buries the beast's body. Poor thing. Hardship strikes that will. Such occurrences are common. If the wheat dies in this freeze, how many people will perish next year? A great many. But there will also be many who come to their aid. And a lot of them will survive. Life itself will not cease. The firmament is as a veil. The ethereal satin silk seems to be infinitely weighty, firmly separating the two combatants and pressing towards them. 
Let's wrap it up. It took a considerable amount of effort to build this heart for you. It would be a terrible shame to see it torn apart in this conflict. You aren't in a position to be making small talk yourself. I nearly took your head off with that firecracker blast just now. Where'd all that destructive might of yours go? Why don't you make a massive pair of scissors and cut his little fabrications to bits? You put some effort into it, too. He's about to turn your painting into paper craft. Oh, it's my fault now. <sighs> cut me some slack here. He just turned that big well firecracker I built into a pile of threads. Has he always been able to do stuff like that? Hmm, didn't think he'd ever have the will to work on his powers over the years. But the question is, why does he seem to have such a good grasp of what our powers are? Hold on. Is it really just one guy we're up against? Time's almost up to her. I truly would like to stick around and chat more. As rare as our reunions are. However, the unfortunate reality is that I am short on time. Hunt must bid you farewell. I really wish I didn't have to use this. The next time we meet, I will have to make amends. If we meet again, that is... To think you'd strike down your own sister. What a disgrace. Shoes as is as is. I didn't think you'd just go and disappear altogether. <laughs> Are you all right? I sincerely hope you weren't just trying to scare us on purpose. Think of it as a much-needed rest. Sorry for worrying you. And here I was wanting to see my little brother again. Lo and behold the scene I come back to. Does he really not see this place as home anymore? My dear sister. I know that look. That's the look on your face whenever you've done something wrong. How long has it been? Sixty-seven years. Then, you'll have to stay for dinner. If you have anything to say, you can say it at the table. I'm sorry. My dear sister. I can't listen to you this time. So, you're taking orders from someone else now, huh? The one who's been behind the curtain this whole time. How much longer does he plan to stay hidden? Whatever it is, wouldn't it be better to tell me face to face? Eamon slowly walks forth from the distance, sauntering past the threshold of time immemorial. It is as if he has been there since the very beginning. I'm in space halt with the sound of his footsteps. You finally decide to show yourself. There's a whole crowd. What a lively gathering. You all are still inclined to such excitement. Wait. Didn't he go insane? The atmosphere of our little reunion isn't quite what I expected it to. What happens in the movies when a relative on the most wanted list suddenly shows up at your doorstep? Is he actually the real deal? Or just a shadow? Any shenanigans the wiki failure tried to pull wouldn't surprise me at this point. It'd be a big deal if he pulled another Sui Xion out of his ass, though. So, what's the plan? Shoes-is-is-is-is-is. Are we fighting? Shang shoes is 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 He men. Ugh. And now here. Don't you think you've gone too far? Small sacrifices for the greater good. Each unto their own. Nothing more. Nothing less. Look at all the devastated fields out there. And all the suffering people. I can't forgive you for talking like that. Upon careful consideration, there still remain two lines of inquiry regarding who owes this debt. Then, you stay here so we can tally it up. This account has been accumulating debt for over a thousand years. You haven't been here in a long time. There are things I must do. There is a battlefield to the north. When the troops assemble, I must stand on the front lines. Bleached bones exposed in the wilds, sir. But fowls sing not for a thousand li. After a thousand years of war. In the end. It is still the commoners in the fields who suffer. You care about them a great deal. The people you take so lightly are actually our teachers. In the truest sense, we take after their form. Find things that interest us. And only then do we find our place in the world. We have nothing in common with them. Not a single thing. What is so different about us? Fur and Mutz may have lives spanning tens of thousands of years, while Mayflies die as quickly as they live. 
But in the end, we are all lives born under heaven. Everything that has a beginning must also have an end. Well, fear and slaughter. Why exactly did you choose this path? What value do you see in it? Law and order. It has demonstrated to me a singular wisdom. As chaotic and disorderly as things may appear, master the rules, and the final outcome will fall into place. The final outcome that we've all been so keenly focused on. This did silence. This is the outcome that you see. Not just for us, but for all things living in these lands. Do you never get tired of standing watch here? Everything in existence is worthy of being cherished. Just as it is now. The grass becomes lush and green every spring. We have come. And we have existed. Is that not enough? So, you've resigned yourself to this end? That's not what you really think. I was simply wondering, have we ever lived as our true selves? Wait. Don't tell me you. I've been contemplating this for a long time. Tell you it. Finally, I have seen another outcome. Not far away. A green sapling pokes its head out from underneath the snow. I know you can see it. A hydrant man stretches out his hand, his fingertips still covered with rough calluses. Can you read my palm for me? Endless solitude. Kelba S. Blurred. Death nigh inexorable. I'm very much looking forward to that. I shall be with. Were you able to see her again? You know that wouldn't be possible. I often find myself thinking of her. She said that education is the great equalizer and wished for every person to be able to read and write. All those schools and books are her legacy. In that regard, you are quite similar. But, these last few years, I've forgotten many things, including her. I can clearly recall that she once played a game with me. She wanted to tell me something during that game, but I've already forgotten what it was. I thought that, uh, you have regrets. I want to find a remedy. 181 fragments. Everyone thought... You had lost your mind. Perhaps. What do you intend to do? I wish to return to that husk. I require its power. I will slay it. Ah. Then then I shall become it. And using its power, I will plot a great windfall for all beings in this realm. It will cost you your life. Uh... But the rest of you will live and truly be yourselves. Shoot us, 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 us. Lend me a portion of your power. The twelve of us. With each additional portion of strength comes another chance at victory. The vast farmlands crisscross us, and this particular visitor places a piece on the wiki board. She as 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 opens her palm, and a handful of seeds fall onto the board. This must be your answer. You reap what you sell. If you haven't feared off the path and really are heading towards our end, then these seeds will germinate at the right time and bear the fruit you desire. You will have conditions for me as well. We can't let you keep creating problems for us. And so concludes the discussions concerning my affairs. If there's anything else, you should speak. He's really grown up, huh? Ready to fly the nest? I'm a thousand years old. My dear sister. I can't stop you. We had a big argument the last time I left. Could you leave me something to remember you by? You've already woven all of the Huang into that brocade of yours. What else do you want to take from me? If you have a bit of remorse in there, you'd better come back alive. Fair enough. Dusk says, Can I ask one last thing from you? What? The painting. Can you give it to me up front? How did you? I will take good care of it. And with that, consider our account settled. Who said you could go? You can, Andoshi. The second Sui's brother, Niyating Di. I knew you were behind this. You have nothing better to do. I'm hiding out in your ruined temple playing our shitty game of wiki. And now you have to come to my turf to ruin everything. Look at the mess you've all made with your little spat here. And all the crops you've destroyed. See if I won't beat your ass right here and now. Watch out. A satin silk ignites upon contact with the incandescent white flames. Reduced to smoke and dash in the blink of an eye. <laughs> Let's see how many more seeds you have left to withstand my flames. Toshi. This might not be the best time to launch your attack. The Chamber of Heaven's designs has suffered grave losses. Any more wrong moves. Aunt Great Yanza's entire northern defensive line may be imperiled. It is more than just the demonic taint that has eyes on Yanza's northern border. Right. Stop trying to scare people. I swear. I'm gonna teach you a lesson if it's the last thing I do. Then, do you not care at all about the other long-lived among you? You little... 
You feign lunacy to protect your mind from demonic contamination. But you've not forgotten your true purpose at all. With the person to Konza. Surely there's no reason we shouldn't be able to come to some accord. Until we meet again. Is over? Yes. It's all over now. You were willing to throw away your life for this project. What? To become renowned for such a grand accomplishment. And then what? I have a dream. Cities interconnected for 10,000 Li, stretching to the Palace of Heaven. No longer would anyone across this great land want for shelter from wind and tree. What is the point of being a Jianxi without any accomplishments to his name? Must you stand head and shoulders above the rest in order to lay the bricks of the city of your dreams? Are you? One of the heavenly Jianess. I'll trade your life for your dream. The skybound white jade capital of twelve pagodas in five cities. The Xion strokes my head, knots my hair, and grants eternal life. The skybound white jade capital of twelve pagodas in five cities. Alas, the ragged mansions of ten thousand chambers. I'd shelter all the needy under heaven, blessing them with joy. They're awake. Where am I? Don't worry. The monsters are gone. You saved me. I wouldn't say that. You were lying unconscious on the ground when I found you. So I went over to try to wake you up. Do I see? It might not necessarily be a good deal to exchange your life for the safety and stability of this place. That's my choice to make. What matters is that Dohuang is safe. You care a lot about this place. Of course I care. I've spent most of my life here. And my roots run deep. Mom, take care of yourself. And love. Goodbye. The incubator. The incubator. The rice plant can still be safe. There's still hope for the experiment. Here you are. I found it. Found what? This is the one rice plant. The one that survived the W Anking Project's experimental plot. It isn't impossible to grow crops on origin IUM contaminated soil. Lao Tsai's experiments proved it. Wait to pay Yo You sir. Judging from your clothes, are you Shi Yi Yangshi from a bureau? I don't think I've seen you before. Yes. I haven't been here very long. The young man scratches his head in confusion, as if he has forgotten something. It is as if he has dreamed a long dream, and the emotions from it still vaguely linger in his heart. He just can't remember the people he met or the things he encountered. After spacing out for a spell, the young man cracks a smile. I'm an apprentice of the Tianxi Bureau, called He Shengzis. I guess I ought to call you Lao Tsai now too. Hello, He Shengzis, sir. I just discovered a very important crop. One that can grow on soil contaminated by origin IUM. This has been a long-term project. As long as this crop can be widely distributed, we'll be able to reclaim tons of wasteland into usable farmlands. And nobody will go hungry ever again. It might take a while to reach that goal, maybe even a really long time. But at least, there's a glimmer of hope now. In that case, are you willing to devote the rest of your time to that goal? Yeah. I wish you luck. Do your best. I won't keep you from your research any longer. Zaijin? Huh? You're leaving already. I was hoping to tell you a bit more about the project. And maybe get a few pointers. That's alright. I trust that you'll be able to accomplish your goals. Saiju. Huh? But teacher. Why does it seem like I've seen her somewhere before? Off to deliver the goods. Obia. How are food prices this year? Famine year. Each caddy of grain is three one more expensive than last year. I suppose when everything's accounted for. Your coin stacks a bit heavier than it was last year. That's not necessarily a good thing. Farming's all about putting food on people's tables. Never heard of farming to get rich. Let me teach you a method to make a little extra money. Just keep it in the back of your mind when you're selling your goods. Sell your highest quality crops locally at a normal price to increase your reputation. For your average quality stuff. Mark up the price and hire a caravan to ship it far away as a novelty product. What are you going on about? Never anything so silly. The best crops are for family and friends first. You sell the average quality stuff. And then use the rest as feed. Your youngsters have way too many slight ricks. Where are you planning to go? The ICIO. After making that much trouble, you just up and leave without saying anything. So, it depends on you. How unwilling are you to let me leave? I just wanted to ask you a question. You said you were going to make a deal with Yanzis. Were you planning to help build Da from the very beginning? I'm a merchant. And when doing business, I value mutual profit and reciprocity. If only one side profits, how would I be any different from a robber? If you didn't want to make an enemy out of all Yanzis, why did you need to do all this? Did you two brothers really have to pick a fight with Yanzis? Her sister was killed. After all... That's sad. The people of Yanzis harbor no animus towards us. Even if Yarji sees the world as nothing more than a wiki board. 
A wiki player naturally feels some sentiment towards the pieces and equipment he's used for a long time. However, those sitting in the court, lurking in the shadows, must pay the price for what they've done. This account must be settled eventually. Even if your own life is on the line? Using its wealth to combat the whole was already a fool's errand. My life has already been assigned a price upon the ledger. You really have lost it. I still remember. A long time ago, you came to visit all of us. One by one, posing a question to each and pointing the way. What do you see in the lands of Great Yanzis? My answer has never changed. And I imagine the same is true for your GE. Okay. Never cared for either of you bastards from the very beginning. There's no talking wisdom with you. And when the time is right, I'm still coming to beat your asses. My brother used to have quite the temper. Whenever he'd lose a game, he'd start throwing cups and bowls around. But weak as he was, there was never any strength behind it. This time, he went a bit overboard. So thank you for stepping in. Guntai, it's over here already. Until we meet again. Stage, Street 3. Wang and Jesus plot shocks court and commoner alike. War with the Suis is now unavoidable. Forgotten by mankind. She's as 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 leaves alone. <laughs> what she must do remains unchanged. <laughs> and you had to take me up Mount Titine. I'll take this spot under the sunshine. You sit over there. You're in much better health than I am. The least you could do is offer me this spot. Coming out here for a stroll. Some sunlight. And the water from the springs of Mount Titine will do your health much good. Ridiculous. It's been decades since we've so much as run into one another outside the palace walls, and you still invited me on this trip. You were the first to grow tired of sitting around. It's not easy to sit still for so long. You men. Ah, oh, Wayne. We need an explanation for this string of events. Right. I am behind all of it. I abetted that you mention Hayes Hong, and I let you in. Is this enough to drag me down? If you want more. Here. Yeah. I let Wang escape the capital. I sent the girl to Victoria. I instigated the demonic calamity. If you must open another vacancy in the court, you can pin all of this on me. The Shan Hayes Hong are a bunch of thugs. How could they possibly amount to anything? Yeah, it was merely a sickly beast. It took only a few dozen to a hundred tienses to deal with. It was just perfect as the meal served to awaken the Sui's. But certainly nothing to write home about. Ugh. <laughs> Phew. In the end, I'm a sickly old man. Two. This is the only use my life has left. You've never been troubled by things going out of hand. No, you're never troubled by anything. There's much that troubles me. I'm afraid of the unpredictable, sinister human mind. I am troubled by the trends I've seen. Going with the tide, a man pulling at each end. It's all for balance. But now the convict has toppled the wiki board. Is it still possible to sue for peace? Human's repairs are complete, and it is on its way to the capital. My tutor, please make up your mind. A letter of reinstatement. I shouldn't have been the one to deliver this. The Imperial Court is already aware of the Da Hong affair and the acts of the two perpetrators. Right now, a Sui's regulator, a Tian Shi bureaus, a six ministries. All of them are in a frantic mess. I happen to be passing by Da Huang on business, so I lent them a hand. It was Mother who asked you to come. Am I correct? Do I see? Seems the court has come to a conclusion regarding the crisis instigated by the proxies. Human's repairs are complete, and it has started sailing toward the capital once more. In the end. It comes to this. You're rather calm. I thought you'd be yapping how much you want to head back to the front lines. Late lately, I've been trying to comprehend a certain wisdom. It is because we fear that we are anxious. The more we are afraid of facing an unknown enemy, the stronger our urge to charge toward it. All for the sake of giving ourselves an explanation. But I'm not afraid anymore. The proxies may have the ability to bend heaven and earth. But in the end, they, too, have human emotion. In that sense, they are not different at all. Our opponents are not untouchable. And so, there is nothing to be afraid of. Lord Zuo, I have no intention of becoming your enemy. However, I do hope you take what I said to heart. The days ahead of us are long. And there shall come a time when we meet again. Not bad. Seems General Zuo didn't send you here for nothing. I am ready for deployment. Where should I go? You met? Do you Don't be so hasty. I'll have you get back to your old role. 
There is a place that comes into contact with the proxies quite frequently. The court isn't completely oblivious to them. But per protocol, a Sui's regulator should launch an investigation. Rose Island? So you leave it? That's right. It seems. Some of them sprouted. And their origin IUM resistance is much higher than anticipated. It's time to take them to the fields outside for further cultivation. Wouldn't that be tough? It's no different from what I do in Dahui. Hmm. When are you coming back? The First. I need to take the seeds to the grain cultivation bases all across the country and produce the first test crops. The Based on how they adapt to different soils, develop a suitable cultivation method. It might take more than ten generations to get accurate results. It might be a while. Hmm. One generation takes a year. Ten years. That's really long. That's long enough for Miami and to get as big as his parents. Hmm. Maybe it's not actually that long. After we switch to the new feed, the stock beasts all started to grow really quickly. Like, it's like they double in size every day. But ten years. That means waiting for the Wanghu Jiyu O trees to grow those sour fruits ten times. When I think about it that way, that kind of feels like an eternity. Sir, let me see you off. Enveloped by the sound of flute, the two are trailed by the setting sun. On the muddy road, there are two sets of footprints leading into the distance. Jian Gan. Age once told me that he wanted to travel to Jiangan after leaving his post. It has been centuries since he last had a taste of Jiangan summertime water chestnuts, and since he has gotten so used to the sight of the yellow sands, perhaps he should enjoy some rest in a quaint, riverside town. Careful, though, don't break this painting. Things was never able to forget that desert. She doesn't actually like war. She simply likes how valiant warriors look on the battlefield. Who wouldn't? The flames of war do not burn in the painting. There is only a column of smoke rising in the vast desert, as the sun sets on the endless river. Enjoy your drink in peace there, and be the poet you want to be. Ian loves lively places. A place like Shang Shuzis is, is a better fit for her than Lung Men. You stay there and don't bother me again. I are to ye. I should have painted him a wiki board, and nothing more. Calculating emotions and terrible aesthetic sensibilities. This garden is yours. I don't want to have to see your face again. In the end, you didn't give yourself a way out. <laughs> if it wasn't for your constant nagging and you playing the older sister card the whole time, I really would have asked you to teach me calligraphy. This will do. Despite all the effort I put into it, who knows if these paintings will remain when everyone wakes from their dreams. Does it really matter either way? When you have visited a place and seen all its sights, everything is but a pipe dream. What more fun is there? With all of you here, I am not lonely. The painter sets her brush down and withdraws. The sky is as clear as a blank scroll. A flock of foul beasts flies past. How does it fit? This is the only cloth I have. If you read that, I couldn't get you another. It fits perfectly. Perhaps it's too late for me to ask. How do you think your chances are? A life and death struggle. This game will be decided by a mere half point. From the sound of it, you could easily lose everything. And you are beyond the point of no return. When will you make your move? Everything is ready. All we need it. I will come see you soon. When you open your eyes and see the pattern on this rope, will you remember how you felt back then, a thousand years ago? That fear deep inside our souls, that disgrace etched into our bones. You'd best remember, I will come see you very soon. Truth is, isn't it? Our fields have yielded nothing for a few years. Can we really still grow crops here? We can still plant food, if we use the right methods. But of course, each field has a different plant suited to it. You need to use the most appropriate method to improve the soil. Plant these seeds here. You'll see results by autumn. Where are you from? Jesus, you look pretty young, but you know so much about the fields. Or you may be at Yanshi from the bureaus. What exactly is it Yanshi anyway? There are people who study specialized knowledge and pass it on to others. That's something. Please keep working. By all means, I'll go get you a glass of water. Now I'll wish the seventh month. <sighs> the ninth bid weaving winter clothes. Here comes spring to bring the sun. <sighs> and warbling of Oreos set. Nine! It was time to lay the garden out. And to, <sighs> to reap the joy of harvest gain. And your millet's last year in. With hemp and beans and all the grains. Mala lush the seventh month. The ninth bid weaving winter clothes. Winter comes early in Da Huang. We need to ready ourselves some proper clothes soon. 
My dear sister, should I make you a set of new clothes? I wouldn't need it. I've developed a new weaving method, which yields satins that are light, durable, and colorful. I have a new design thought out, and I'm certain it will look perfect on you. Huh. Whatever floats your boat, your boat. It does seem rather pleasant. You've truly lived now. My good gentleman, I know by heart the wisdom of commerce that you've taught me. But there remains one thing that I do not understand. All things under heaven are fleeting and indistinct. How should I appraise them? <laughs> Take a look. How much is the jade pendant time wearing worth? I know this pendant. It is very common and worth at most to tiles of silver. But this pendant was left to me by my mother. I have been carrying it around for as long as I can remember. To me, it is priceless. In the end, appraisal means appraising the human heart. I shall remember. It's almost summer. That's the season for Jiangong lichies. The climate is dry up north. The lichies there are hardly sweet, and simply don't compare to the lichies back home. I thought I would go back home and open a raid route for selling the southern lichies up north, only for there to be a river standing in my way, stopping me from ever going back. It's a shame that this rain came at a terrible time. It will be summer in two days. Once your body warms up, we will hire a boat to cross the river. We'll get it. I know in my heart that this is the end of the road. Why must man always go against heaven? How old are you this year? Ages are not very meaningful to my kind. But if we must, I will be exactly fifty. Come, your shoes, sister. I can tell you are not quite the same as mere mortals. I envy your long life. Still, now that I consider it, such a long life would be full of hardship. No matter what you are, I am eighty-three. You have followed me for so long. It certainly wouldn't be a bad deal for you. If I called you my adopted son. I was fortunate to have met you and seen the boundless sights these lands have to offer. Fate brought us together. I have nothing much to give you. Aside from that worthless business, this one mantra is all I have. All under heaven live for profit. And die for profit. I have been reciting this mantra from the day I began studying business, and it helped me triumph over many rivals. If everything under heaven could really be summed up with just the word profit, this might just be a rather boring place. I don't have much time left and can't walk much farther. If you truly have such a long life ahead of you, then go and see for me. Walk this great land. Go and see for me whether there is really some kind of great windfall that profits all under heaven, if you truly do find it. I will remember. I will go and see.